Hello there, and uh, welcome to this video on my uh, Unify APAC Long Range. That's one hell of a name. Um, ceiling wall mount, or whatever. Um, basically, it's a way to ceiling mount the UAPAC LR, um, but on a wall. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, in our case, I tried mounting it on the wall, got horrible uh, reception because, well, it's not really meant to be mounted on the wall. And our ceiling is tilted, as you can see. So in order to get it horizontal, um, I decided to 3D print a wall, mac, uh, wall, mac, a wall mount. Uh, that was a mixture of wall bracket and wall mount. Yeah, uh, which goes in the wall up there and then has it horizontal. So you can see the end of the um, of the Ethernet cable there that runs over to the PO injector and then that's connected directly to the fiber in um, all in one box now um yeah so the first version i made was this one and i got a bit confused when designing it because i did not have this to look at um i this is my parents summer cottage and i was at home in my apartment uh, designing and then 3d printing this so i didn't really have anything to look at other than pictures and the quick start guide so I followed the quick start guide for, um, I think it was ceiling mounting this or some, I don't know, whatever, where it says that there needs to be a whole 25 millimeter center to center, uh, a bit distance down and then I think 18 millimeters diameter. This is 20 though. Um, right. The other thing I did wrong was that uh, when designing it, I forgot that I was not mounting the UAP to this bracket. I was mounting a bracket to the bracket and these screws come through this way. So I made the holes, the six millimeters, the quick start guide asked for, because, um, well, I, I don't really know. I think that's when you have to pass through bolts up through some holes, they just ask for them to be large, the holes, but that was way too large for um, taking three millimeter, uh, M3 nuts on the back side. So I stacked up some washers and uh, glued them down. Um, right, so, a problem with this thing here is that when you have this, uh, when you have a cable coming up through this hole here, and you put this on with the bracket that is now over there, put that on, it's blocked. So you can't get this down here and then rotate it. It can only sit like this. So you had to, well, I had to fish the cable through here and then fish it into there. And that was really quite difficult, honestly. Um, it was okay when we set this up because this cable wasn't fixed yet. So we could just do that on the floor down here and then go up, put the access point up, and then pull the cable. Uh, but now that the cable is pulled, that would be a pain to do again. So um, now with this new bracket, um, what that allows for is that when this is over here, there is still plenty of space for the cable down there. Now this is actually not terribly, uh, it's not a terrible bit. Okay, let's see, how can I show that? It's not really all that much wider. Um, because, as I said, I made the holes too large in now I think I, no, okay. I made the holes too large in this piece and the way this piece is dimensioned is that I have the hole center to center, of course, fixed because that has to line up with the holes in that bracket that I'm mounting to. So those are fixed, those distances, and then I have three millimeter padding on the outside of the hole. So if the hole diameter is larger, that's gonna push out these sides more. Now that I went from six millimeter holes down to three millimeter holes, um, that is going to save me three millimeters? Can... Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, it's gonna save me Three millimeters all in all, because there's one and a half over here and one and a half over here. I don't know. Anyways, all in all, this bump only goes a bit further out than it did before, but again, it doesn't really matter because it does not go past the edge of the uh, access point. So um, I will now put it on the wall and show you how that works. Be right back. Hey there. So I'm on the ladder here, and uh, I've plugged in the Ethernet cable. I've threaded it through the slot up here and plugged it into the um, access point. And then now to uh, mount it, you simply just, well, I kinda, there you go. And then it's there. 
Okay, so back down from the ladder, I figured I'd just end off this video, uh, depending on where I edit it in, but I, I think I'll just end off the video with talking about some details about the print. I think it is zoomed in now. Yeah, there we go. I just had my dad help me um, film me while I was on the ladder because that required two hands. Um, and, well, it's a high ceiling here, so we get to zoom in a bit. Right, um, so it's fine just to use the old one because the things I'm going to talk about are pretty much the same. So I printed this in PETG, uh, just clear PETG because that is what sticks best to my 3D printer's uh, bed. I have a non-heated bed because my, <laughs> my bed is half a meter in diameter, so I don't really want to waste electricity heating that up. Uh, and, well, as it just so happens, clear PETG sticks wonderfully to it. Some black stuff I have at home, I have to use a uh, hairdryer just to heat up the build plate before using it. So I prefer the clear stuff. Um, right. So 15% 3D cubic inf... Well, whatever the 3D infill is in Slicer. Um, well, the first time they introduced 3, uh, 3D infill. I think it is 3D honeycomb. Yeah. Which looks cooler, but doesn't sound nearly as cool as 3D cubic. <laughs> oh well, um, yep, yeah. so, uh, um, yeah. and then these holes back here, I believe are 6 millimeters in diameter, and these holes in the uploaded version are 3.5 millimeters in diameter. Fasteners you will need, uh, whatever you need to go into your wall, just make sure that the head doesn't go through the hole there, um, which is why I'm using washers up there. And then you're going to need, well, I, honestly I think two would be fine, but four uh, M3 by 15, so M3 uh, and 15 millimeter long bolts. These are 25 millimeter long, and I measured they are 10 millimeters too long. Uh, no, no, it doesn't matter. You can't really see the bolts from down here, not even over from the corner, so that's okay, but they are a bit annoying to thread because they're too long. Um, and because I would recommend using some Loctite 242 I think it's the blue Loctite, the one that's removable again. I would recommend using some thread locker there for that. Um, also, this part I haven't done this to, but the part I now mounted on the wall uh, in hopes of increasing layer bonding strength. I put it in my oven at home at 110 degrees Celsius, but I think that would, when I measured it with a thermocouple, that swung between 90 degrees and 120 degrees Celsius. I tried putting my oven at 150 degrees and it completely melted the part that is not hot enough to print PTG is actually quite a lot colder than I need to print this print this at 235 C so I figured 105 would be fine but 150 would be fine but nope 150 degrees C is too hot so um let's see if there's actually anything to worry about let's see if I can separate the layers here a bit over the edge of the table so I don't mark it And again, PHG proves incredibly durable. It does not want to focus. Focus. Focus on my finger then. Too close for an iPhone, I guess. Okay. It just deforms the hole. It doesn't actually separate the layers. So I don't think you have to actually put it in the oven like I did. Yeah, so I think that is about it. Um, Thank you for watching and uh, I hope you can use this mount and this video. Bye.